Friends, if you're thinking of buying a skeletonized watch, look no further. Watch this video to find out what is skeletonization, what's its purpose, and what sort of a watch brand should you look for. Hello friends, welcome to the platform that is Stuff Station One, your only platform to see the best gear reviews from my collection. Right friends, today I'm focusing on the brand called Earnshaw, Earnshaw Watches, and really their products, their watches, range within the four to five hundred to the thousand uh, pound range. Now before I talk a little bit about the watches themselves, uh, I want to focus on uh, their namesake and uh, he was an Englishman by the name of Thomas Earnshaw and he was born in 1749 died uh, 1829. Uh, he was born in Lancashire, which is sort of northern uh, England, and he was really a pioneer of horology. So the, you know, the art of clock making and watch making, and really his speciality lay within marine chronometers. And, you know, his advances really helped to uh, navigate the uh, the, the Royal Navy uh, fleet during that time. He also developed clocks for use in observatories and many of these uh, clocks and timepieces, marine chronometers to this day can still be seen in museums and in auction houses. Now, the piece that I have here is from the Beagle range from Earnshaw Watches. And the name itself comes from the Royal Navy ship at the time of uh, Thomas Earnshaw that carried one of his marine chronometers. So it's really nice to have that link here. Now, the, fo the focus really on today's uh, review is on skeletonization, you know, what it is, what it entails. Before I actually get into uh, skeletonization, I find sort of horology and watchmaking in general or automatic or mechanical watches in, gen in general really quite fascinating because you have the process of miniaturizing everything, all of the springs, the uh, wheels, the pinions and all of that is miniaturized and encapsulated within a uh, case and effectively that is used to uh, tell the time and the way in which you know, man uh, in his ingenious nature devised that um, is just fascinating. So uh, a further fascination of that will be the skeletonization as a process. Now, skeletonization comes from the root word squalet and skeletonization was really pioneered by another master watchmaker, a Frenchman by the name of André Charles Caron, who was born in 1697 and died in 1775. And he was the royal clockmaker to the King of France at that time. And he made the first skeletonized watch. And basically, skeletonization is whereby the movement whose plates, bridges are actually cut away to expose all the wheels and all the internal workings of the actual watch itself, leaving only the substance which the watch needs to function. The movement is then placed uh, between two sapphire crystals so that it can then be seen and enjoyed. Now, let's focus on the actual packaging itself. We can see that the actual watch itself comes in this uh, rather nice uh, brown carded box, quite sort of uh, a thick uh, card used there. It's got the uh, Earnshaw branding there. It's quite nice, that's sort of done in a silver print. And we can uh, see uh, the, the dating there along with the uh, two double E uh, motif. If we take it off, that reveals the inner box itself you've got like with all nice watch uh, brands uh, a front lid that goes down and we can see that we have some of this uh, sort of thin styrofoam that's used to then further protect the box itself taking the uh, inside box out put that to one side 
we can see a really nice uh, a wooden box here. So in the light, we can see that you know it catches the grain of the wood itself, and we've got this nice bit of inlaying here. Um, I'm, I'm not sure I think it might be a metal that's been inlaid in there but that's a really nice touch there what I also like is on the uh, corners you know that's been finished off quite nicely we've got nice sort of beveled edges there so that just adds a little bit of depth to it we can also see the Earnshaw branding again here what's really nice is that that's been inlaid into the actual wood itself okay so overall uh, a really nice uh, wooden uh, box and we can see uh, two double hinges there as well and again that's got this sort of beveling here so a really nice uh, outline to the actual box itself now opening the box up it's actually quite nice it's got a nice spring-loaded uh, mechanism there and it does sort of close with a nice little sort of thud as well at the same time so here you go Okay, so that's actually quite nice. Um, we can actually see it's got uh, a cushioned interior. Again, we've got the Earnshaw branding there. It's not leather, okay? So it is sort of like a, a pleather material, uh, a synthetic uh, leather. And that's um, been used uh, all around there. Uh, if we just take the watch out to one side, I'll just put it down here and then I'll show you some of the other uh, items that actually comes within the box itself. So we've got a nice little watch cushion there and that's quite nicely padded. Uh, so that comes with the watch for you to put the watch around. Uh, inside reveals uh, a nice little, I would say sort of slightly smaller than A5, uh, little envelope with a tab closure system there. And then I just wanna open this without ripping it. That will actually reveal all of the uh, documentation that one gets with the actual watch itself. Let's just pop that there. Uh, so we can see a little booklet here and that gives all of the sort of uh, information. We've got like a warranty card there with warranty information on the back. And then we have the actual booklet here and the booklet is uh, or, or rather carries information relating to the brand itself, a bit of the brand history. Um, it sort of uh, touches on some of the uh, things that Thomas Earnshaw developed, what he was really renowned for, and also some of the uh, features of this particular watch and you know how to sort of set the time, date, all of that uh, information. So that's all packaged up inside there i'll just pop that to one side and then also inside here is quite nice we've got a nice little microfiber cloth as well that you can use to actually clean the watch with so all in all um nice uh, packaging nice branding and everything that you would really sort of expect in a watch that is within the sort of 450 pound range now the watch itself is called the Beagle Skeleton, but it's the Woolwich version. Woolwich being the name of the actual uh, boatyard that built the Royal Navy ship, the Beagle, which carried Thomas Earnshaw's chronometer as it sort of sailed. And the actual watch itself, if we just grab it here, if we have a look at the tag, we can see and sure details there. Uh, and this particular one is uh, comes under the code of ES807606. So that's the actual uh, reference of the actual piece itself. Now, if I just remove the tag and focus on the watch a little bit here, we can see that it's actually a solid stainless steel watch and you can see the crown there with the uh, etched double E logo for Earnshaw. It does have a black PVD coating to it, and that's quite nice. It adds that sort of stealthy look to it. And again, that's repeated in sort of some of the black details here that I'll touch on shortly. Um, it has this uh, double uh, level bezel so that's actually quite nice it's got this sort of stepped detailing there 
and the watch itself it is a 42 millimeter okay uh, case diameter so it's not small it's not really big as well it's quite a manageable size now my wrist size is about I think six and a half inches and this actually fits on it quite nicely um, it does actually have a sapphire uh, coated mineral lens to it it also has and you can see it in some lights you might just be able to catch some of that blue sort of tint to it so it does have an AR coating on there and that's uh, anti-reflective coating and that's really nice when you get a lot of uh, sunlight particularly in very sunny sunny climates where where I live um, you will actually see the watch but it does result in this sort of bluish haze and that's uh, typical of all um, AR coated uh, watches I think the AR coating on this one is actually quite nice and quite heavy so that makes me uh, wonder as to whether there's actually a double AR coating on the actual surface and then underneath the actual uh, mineral uh, uh, sorry underneath the actual crystal itself um, the, the watch itself is, I think I picked it up for about 450, 470 pounds it sort of retails for. Uh, the movement itself is what's known as a, a seagull movement and I believe they are cased then uh, within uh, Switzerland uh, and, and that's uh, what you get for that pricing there. Now the actual skeleton movement if we look at it in a bit more sort of detail here what's really nice you can see here the escapement that wheel sort of spinning backwards and forwards backwards and forwards and you know that was the whole point of skeletonization that you know you could actually see these things uh, working. Uh, also, if we have a look, you can just make it out there. We've got the actual pallet forks with the rubies inside them. And that is then an extension of the escapement. And that's what sort of allows that uh, escapement wheel to do that rocking uh, backwards and forwards, thus sort of uh, delivering the energy as you like through the actual movement itself. If we also have a look, what's quite nice here is, if I get a shot there, you can actually see that that's the mainspring, okay? You can see there is a spring there that has been sort of coiled up, and that coils up when um, you sort of uh, wind the watch, or when you actually spin the rotor within the watch, uh, because it is an automatic movement. You can either wind it up by hand, but it does have this rotor, which I'll show you at the back uh, shortly, that will actually, through kinetic energy, uh, drive the actual watch itself. Um, so that's quite nice. You've got the uh, exposed mainspring there. Um, and normally that mainspring would be sort of encapsulated within sort of a barrel that you would never see. Um, but obviously, because this is a skeletonized watch, they wanted to actually um, show all the sort of inner workings of the actual watch itself. Now, there's quite a variety of fabrication techniques. We've got sort of matte and uh, a polish look to sort of key parts of the actual watch itself. And what I really like is there's a lot of depth and a lot of detail to the actual piece itself. And, you know, you can see the architecture is on so many levels here uh, that it's just uh, simply a joy to actually sort of look at. And I've wanted um, a skeletonized watch for, for quite a while. And at this price range, I don't think you're going to find a really uh, a better example. You know, there are other brands, you know, the likes of sort of Chrono Swiss that do uh, skeletonized watches. But you're looking at, you know, at least, you know, four times the amount that I paid for this particular piece for a half decent one. Um, so as I said, variety of sort of fabrication techniques. And what's actually quite nice is that when you see the bridges and that's those black parts there, um, that has quite a nice industrial sort of look to it. And then you have those raised and applied indices that are then polished as well. Um, 
and complementing that, you've then got around sort of here, the circular sort of cutaway parts. And I think what they've done here is really sort of meld the modern along with sort of quite vintage touches to the actual uh, watch itself. Now the watch itself, it does uh, come with this uh, leather NATO strap and I've got to say it's actually a really, really nice. It's quite thin, um, genuine leather and we can see that it has the uh, Earnshaw sort of branding there and the feel of it is actually really quite smooth and you know it feels that it's going to be one of these straps that is actually going to uh, sort of last and age quite nicely so i'm looking forward to uh finding out how that sort of matures and develops and the actual nato buckles themselves you know they've been stitched in sort of quite nicely uh no sort of miss stitching or anything like that that's been done in quite sort of thick um thread there as well so i think that's going to be quite robust there as well now um i'll do a wrist shot shortly but before i do that let me just take it off of the nato and just show you the actual back of the watch itself now the actual watch itself it does come with a two-day power reserve okay so you know you've got uh, a fair bit of time there and you can manually wind it okay but at the same time with sort of automatic watches you know they do um uh, have a, a spinning uh, rotor there now we can see the the, the rotor there will actually sort of drive and power up the actual mainspring of the actual uh, watch movement and it's quite nice we've got the Earnshaw uh, uh, badging there along with the 1805 uh, uh, feature branding now the actual uh, watch itself it the thickness of it is around 13 uh, millimeters. It's quite a lightweight watch. It's, it's about 100 grams. I measured it uh, before. I don't really like too heavy watches. You know, after wearing it for a full day, it can get a little bit cumbersome. So this one is actually sort of weighted in quite nicely. Um, the indexes here that you can see, I don't know if you can quite sort of make out, but in the middle there and on the hands, we do have uh, loom. Uh, on it applied. Now you've got to remember this is not a tool watch, this is a skeletonized watch so it's not going to be the loom that you will find on a diver's watch for example. So um, but enough there you know if you find yourself at night time wanting to actually sort of tell the time there and it's in the sort of the classic three hand uh, format so hours minutes and then the actual seconds itself um i, I did actually mention before but it does actually come with a two year international warranty so i feel that you know i'm actually quite sort of backed up there quite nice sort of uh, thick spring bars here as well that they've supplied uh, for the actual nato to actually go onto now in terms of the pricing, as I mentioned, it's on the sort of the higher £400 range. I mean, Earnshaw do watches that sort of go up to about the £1,000 range, and they're, they're some fantastic pieces and ones that I would uh, really want to acquire in the future as well. Um, now, for that price, I do feel you are getting quite a lot there. Um, could we have seen some, uh, you know, Cote de Genève, so, so striping that you would see on Swiss automatic watches or maybe some perlage uh, circular graining. Uh, that would have been nice, but I think, you know, around that price range, I don't think you're going to find many watches that offer uh, a, a real sort of a beta movement along with uh, that level of finishing in detail. I know they have other watches that have uh, those finishing on there, but you know you will be paying a lot more because it's a lot more labor intensive to do those particular uh, applied finishes. But in terms of what we have here, I think there's um, that it's been done nicely. And I think for the price, it's, it's not bad at all. Friends, are you enjoying the video so far? If so, please consider liking and subscribing. And please let me know if there's anything I can improve for your viewing content.
Now, I just wanted to show you a couple of wrist shots, uh, guys. And really what I like about this piece is it's actually really versatile. Now you can see here that it goes under the cuff of a cufflink pair of shirts. I'm wearing a, a, a suit jacket here and uh, you can see it's actually sort of quite discreet once it sort of fully pops out there. You know, it doesn't look you know, too sort of overpowering and too overbearing to actually wear with uh, something of a, of a formal nature. So that's the first uh, little shot that I wanted to actually show you here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to wear something a little bit more casual so you can then see how it looks on the hand or, or on uh, clothing of a bit more of a casual nature. Now I'm wearing now quite a dark green combed cotton sweatshirt here and you can see when I sort of do the reveal you know how versatile the actual piece is you know it's quite casual now compared to something that I had on before which was quite formal and this with a pair of uh, jeans a nice pair of uh, trainers will really set that sort of uh, look off even with a, a, a half shirt or a t-shirt as well. You can see now it's got this sort of quite bold sort of striking uh, look to it. Now the other thing that I really like about this piece is that you know you get a lot of questions when people sort of do catch it um, in their vision. They want to sort of come a bit closer and they want to sort of uh, look at it and they can see the, all the internal working sort of moving and people who are not necessarily watch people they're fascinated at the fact that you know you have essentially so many small little components that will actually uh, help to power and tell the, the, the time, you know, and unbeknown to them was the fact that, you know, mechanical watches actually uh, exist. So I really like that. It's a real sort of conversation piece. Now, do I think it's worth it, this particular um, Earnshaw watch? Uh, I think for the price, yes, definitely. You know, you do get a lot of watch here for the money. And I think if it was one that you wanted to sell, I know a lot of watch people, they'll buy watches, they'll wear it for a while and they'll sell them. I don't think you'll lose a lot of money on this particular watch. For me, it's not something that I'm going to sell. I want to keep it because what it does for me is that it actually fills that blank in my growing watch collection. And that is for something that is actually quite unique, a bit of a, 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 a talking point and uh, uh, something that is of a skeletonized nature. So on that front, I think uh, Earnshaw watches have done a good job on this.